everyone welcome back to my channel so in today's video I'm going to be talking to you guys about an amazing resource which you can use to learn lots of new techniques and also learn lots of different new skills so for this video I'm going to be demonstrating some of the new techniques that I have learnt and to do this I'm going to be painting a winter landscape as I want to include more backgrounds into my original artworks so the website that I'm using is called Skillshare and they are very kindly sponsoring this video. However, all of the opinions that I'm going to be giving you are completely my own and also I'm going to be giving you a code which you can use to get two months completely free of Skillshare. So Skillshare has thousands of different classes in so many different areas. So it's coming up to 15,000 different classes. And so these classes are in areas like the creatives. So you can get find art tutorials or even learn about illustration or animation. And then there's business skills that you can learn. So I always say that it's really important to learn how to market yourself and selling your artwork if you want to become an artist. And then there's also more unrelated topics. So for example, you can learn color so cooking and learn a new language and learn more about gaming so there's definitely something there to suit everyone and what I love about Skillshare is that you don't just watch the class it's really interactive and you get to upload your final projects that you've created from the class so every class gives you a project to complete and the classes are more extended and more in-depth so they're typically about half an hour to an hour long which is really in-depth and you get to see everybody else's project that they've completed and another thing to look into is instead of just watching all the classes you can actually teach classes yourself and you can earn money this way so that's definitely worth looking into so to get two months completely free of Skillshare and unlimited access to all of the classes right now just enter the code Kirsty two free when you go to the Skillshare website and this will give you two months completely free access to Skillshare and you will need to input your credit card details but you won't be charged and you can cancel this anytime so make sure you head over to Skillshare and put in that code to get your two months unlimited access for free because I can guarantee that you're going to find something on there that's really useful for you and there's no harm in going and checking it out because it's completely free and you can cancel it at any time you want. And even after two months, prices start from only $10 a month and so if you're finding the content really useful then it's definitely worth it. So now moving on to the painting, I start off by applying masking fluid to the areas of the paper that I want to preserve and that I want to keep white. And I'm using a really thin paintbrush to do this. And this actually leads me on to the first tip that I learned by using Skillshare. And that is that when you're using masking fluid, if you use a bit of soap on the tip of your paintbrush before you apply the masking fluid, it helps to make it really easy to pull off the masking fluid once you've finished applying it and normally the masking fluid would really clog up the paintbrushes and it would be really hard to get it out and it can ruin a lot of your paintbrushes but if you apply a bit of soap onto the paintbrush first then the masking fluid just kind of is easy to pull off and this is something that's such a small tip but it makes it a lot easier to work with masking fluid and helps preserve your paintbrushes a bit more. So when I was painting this I was using the wet into wet method which I use a lot in my watercolour paintings anyway but I wasn't really sure about how you can use it to do landscapes and so I watched more videos about how you can use this technique to create distant looking trees and sunsets and clouds and stuff like that and it was really useful to watch these videos and learn how you can apply these methods because it made me realise that when I was doing my last painting I would now like to approach it differently. So I was going for a very snowy, misty looking landscape and I started off by doing a purplish background and one thing that's really good with wet into wet methods is that it means that you don't get any harsh edges when you do your watercolours and this makes it look really natural because for example if you were looking at a horizon and a landscape of lots of fields it would look really soft and there wouldn't be any harsh edges so the wet into wet method is really good because it helps the colours bleed into each other slightly which really softens the look. So for this painting I didn't use any reference photos at all, I quickly sketched out a little concept sketch that I liked and then I just transferred it on and I just got painting and I didn't really have any colour themes, I just wanted to use this as a study and I wanted to test out lots of different techniques. 
so I'm aware that it isn't perfect and there's a lot more that I need to improve on but for a first study of landscapes I was really happy with how it turned out and I definitely learned so many techniques which I would never have thought of before so for example I'm going to be showing you two different techniques that I especially liked which was firstly using cling film on your watercolour to create things like stalks on flowers or different textures which were incredible and it was such a simple thing to use and create such effective results but I would never have thought to have done it and the second thing is that you can use salt to create very stormy looking snowy looking settings and it's a really interesting look that you can get an effect and it's another thing that I would never have thought of if I didn't watch the Skillshare videos and I still have so many more saved onto my list that I need to watch and I will definitely be sharing with you other techniques that I learn in the future because I have so many other tutorials that I want to watch and I need to practice lots more landscapes as well. So with the cling film technique all you do is that you apply the watercolours first and then you can apply the cling film on top and kind of pull it and stretch it into different ways that you want to get a more appealing looking composition for yourself basically and then you can let it dry for about an hour and then when you peel it off you get some really interesting textures. And then with the salt, if you just sprinkle the salt onto the watercolour piece when it's wet, when it dries it kind of um, repels the watercolour in a way, I'm not sure how it completely works, it kind of repels from it, I'm not sure if that's technically correct, but you can see I've done a time lapse of how it dries when you apply the salt and it just kind of um, goes away from where the salt is. And you can get so many different techniques depending on how much salt you put on and where you place it, so definitely have a go at experimenting with that and see where you have to put the salt to get the best effect that you like. And so I coated the whole of the paper with water first, but I didn't use too much, otherwise the colours would have bled a lot. And this is something that I feel like I've been doing wrong in my past drawings. So I feel like I've been applying too much water, so it dilutes the colours too much on the page and makes it a lot more uncontrollable to work with them. So one of the things that I learned about on the watercolour tutorials on Skillshare was that you can use the wet into wet method, but you can get different results depending on how much water you apply down. And I learned that I should put a lot less water from to make it more controllable and more manageable to think about where the colours are going to go. Especially if you need to create trees in the distance, you will want it to have the tree sort of shape, but you won't want it to look too harsh, so it's getting that balance of putting the right amount of water down. So I really enjoyed using this technique to help create the distant looking trees and I also learned that with watercolours it's best to work from light to dark which I don't think I've been doing in the past and I think that's what's made it really hard for me to fix mistakes in the past. So I'm definitely going to be approaching that way of working in the future. So I used the salt effect a bit in the clouds and it created a really nice stormy looking effect and just added a bit of interest to the painting. And then I worked a bit more on rendering some more of the details. So I made some of the trees look a bit more prominent in the background. And then I started working on the branches. So this was another thing that I learned. So how to draw trees and make them look more natural. So I tended to make them look more stiff and they would all go in the same sort of direction. And I learned how to mix it up and the fact that they're always curvy. They're not necessarily straight. And how you can do the set of lines. So do thin skinny lines and how you apply the paint to make it look more realistic and more natural to how they would look in real life. And I really valued how much time the teachers put into putting all these lessons together. So because this was a snowy scene, I started off by marking in all of the branches where I wanted them to go. So my main aim was to make it look quite subtle and not too busy with all the different trees. So I tried to keep it quite simplistic and I wanted the trees to be snowy. So I first marked out where all of the trees were and then I went in with some gouache and I used this on the trees to make it look more snowy. And I also used some snow on the white areas to really brighten it up and add more texture to the snow as well. I used quite a lot of gouache in this painting, especially to add little bits of grass coming over the lake and on the lake itself to create the rippling effect and just a few splatter marks to create more snow and interest in the painting. And I really like using gouache to add highlights and it works really well over the top of watercolours as well. So I definitely think that if I hadn't have watched those Skillshare videos, then I wouldn't really know where to start with a landscape painting. So I've done small background things in the past, but I've never really done a full landscape because it's always intimidated me and I know it's a lot different than working with portraits. But with all these tutorials, there are so many out there that's catered for landscapes and watercolours that 
I was really confident going into it that I got some good techniques and learned some new skills and ways to approach it that I was a lot more confident of how to start and it really built up my confidence to just go for it and just work on it without a reference photo and really just get stuck in which I'm normally quite unconfident about and I like working with reference photos. So it was nice to just have that freedom and just kind of go with it and not be worried about things going wrong. So I'm definitely going to be watching many more Skillshare videos because I honestly think they are such great value and the content is so well made and so in depth that it's basically like having your own teacher and the knowledge that you get on there is basically like going to a school and learning about art. You learn so many techniques and there's so many tutorials and not just in art but in like the business sector as well and in cooking so just general lifestyle things. It is so valuable and it's always really nice to learn new skills and broaden your horizons. So yeah, remember that once you finish this video, head over to Skillshare. The link to Skillshare is at the top of my description box. So click on it and remember to use the code Kirsty 2 free to get two months completely free and unlimited access to Skillshare. And also, once you've looked around a bit, feel free to comment your thoughts and your opinions on Skillshare to help out everybody that's watching it and is thinking about joining them, tell them your honest opinions as well. Anyway guys, that's it for this video, so make sure you head over to their site. Thank you guys so much for watching, I'll leave links to my social media sites as well in the description below. And as always, if you're new to my channel, I have free videos every week, so feel free to subscribe and join me here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!